As the 2023 general election draws closer, party primaries are on in full swing. We look at the politics of party primaries and delegates on the program today. Also on the breakfast, it was a day of intrigues and drama as the PDP held its governorship primaries yesterday. We'll take a look at what transpired and analyze the chances of the winners. And as usual, we have an interesting and in-depth analysis of today's newspaper headlines and of the press. A very good morning. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, Thursday morning right here in the city of Lagos, reaching you live from Plus TV Africa Studios in Victoria, Allen, Lagos. You're welcome to Off the Press. You're welcome to The Breakfast. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Boko. Beautiful Thursday morning right here. And it's really great to be back on your screen. Messi, you, you're glowing. I mean, every day is just a, a new glow. <laughs> a new glow, I don't know. You know how um, it is it now. You wash me, you won't wash me. <laughs> <laughs> Messi, yesterday was, was, was quite a drama-filled day. Mm -hmm. You know, um, looking at the, the, uh, the, the PDP primaries, it was, you know, information was coming out almost every hour. You know, that these people have had the calm. This one had, uh, you know, uh, pulled out of the race and all that. We'll spend some time to look at the governorship uh, primaries of the PDP. Um, some interesting results. You know, some people pulled out of the race in, in, in some states, uh, like Enugu State and Abia State, surprisingly. Um, but the big one was uh, 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 Peter Obi <laughs> uh, pulling out of the, the People's Democratic Party altogether. I think we'll have time to look at that. Um, as we go on, uh, and of course uh, talk about it in depth right here. But um, th that was that was that was really really surprising to uh, a lot of people. Um, I saw the message first on WhatsApp, and I ran to Twitter. The uh, first thing that came to my mind was that oh, you know, it's um, one of those uh, fake news uh, attempts that we see. You know, someone must have doctored it. Uh, where did they even get the stamp of the PD? I said also oh, something was totally unexpected, only to head to his Twitter account and see that as a first tweet on his Twitter handle. And I just said, okay, let's look at the comments. Yeah, it was interesting to see, Mercy, that um, one of the comments uh, or replies to Peter B's uh, announcement uh, was a young man who goes by the name Obong Ekpe. Um, he, he, that's his Twitter handle, Obong underscore Ekpe, mm -hmm. who um, is a member from what it seems of the PDP in uh, Akwaibom State. He showed his um, PDP membership card. He showed the back, the outer part, took a picture of it, and opened, showed the inner part, took a picture of it. Um, we showed his face, showed his name, showed his, um, his uh, membership of the PDP. And he'd been paying his registry and paying his um, whatever they pay. Fee. Yeah, since 2018 in his ward in Akwaibom State. And then after the third picture was a picture of the card torn to shreds. Torn to shreds. And he says, um, I've torn my PDP membership card. card. Uh, Peter B, wherever I go, I go. I can't be in a party that puts party interests ahead of national interests. It was interesting to see. Uh, very interesting. So, I mean, there's a lot surrounding his um, resignation Yesterday, you could also say that the microblogging platform, uh, if you look at the t tweets that's been on top of the, the chat, has been that of uh, Peter B's resignation, has been that <laughs> of, uh, you know, you see the PDP, you would see a lot of tweets, and up until this moment, I mean, the reactions are still pouring in and all of that. And so, uh, surprisingly for some people, it would be like, oh, really? He has... Um, this um, followership, whether or not is via Twitter, because people have said that. I mean, what you have on Twitter and what you have in real life are different things entirely. And so those who are on Twitter and those who are, or those who will be on ground or those mm -hmm. who understand the dynamics or those who have accepted him mm. to different, uh, you know, sections and category. But it's a very dicey one. Now, um, first of all, the Electoral Act, as it is, um, does not allow you to, you know, go through the circle. So you cannot um, contest, you know, the primaries. The primaries. Mm -hmm. 
in a party. In a party, and, and if you then lose, like they used to do before. Yes. So I, I lost. <laughs> them going, them going buy the candidate, candidate right. from another party. So it doesn't Maybe allow. Maybe Labour so, Party. Now a lot of people have told that okay, this this would be it because majorly, so many persons are asking what it is. There are also insinuation that it's possible that you have some persons, powerful persons okay. in the party who who have threatened uh, that they would suspend him or he's foreseen what the outcome would be, and that's mm. why he decided to take a bow and walk away. So he doesn't but, want, to, want to be caught in, in that, that uh, electoral act web that, of not being able to, to decamp like they used to do. Exactly, mm. not being able to Very decamp. But also, so if that's the case, because um, that part of the electoral act does not allow you to decamp, I mean, you can't just be everywhere at the same time. You can't be here mm. at the PDP, contest the primaries, and then decamp to another political party because it doesn't favor it's you. Not, it's not, it's not also, football. Uh, and also, you know, try to pitch your tent there mm -hmm. and vie for the same position. Mm -hmm. Now, that part of the Constitution. Another part of the Constitution, I mean, not the Constitution, the Electoral Act also. You look at Section 77 of the Nigerian Electoral Act 2022. Uh, I would like to read it. It says, a political party registered under this act shall, shall be a body cooperate with perpetual secession and common seal and may use and be sued in its corporate name. Now, every registered political party shall maintain the register of its member in both hard and soft copy. Each political party shall make re, um, make sure re-registered or the register is available to the commission not later than 30 days to the commission not later than 30 days before the date fixed for the party primaries or Congress c convention. So two things right now. Very You're looking like a lawyer. <laughs> no, <laughs> to I'm not dress a lawyer. like a lawyer. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm just saying that it's very dicey. So one would think that the reason he did this is because you can't do that because of the election. He doesn't act. want to be like and this. So you, you, because if you, he already sees the sign, <laughs> and it's difficult for him to go ahead and contest. But it's also a section of the constitution. I mean, of the electoral. Act. Why do you yes. keep saying the constitution? The electoral act, mm. section mm. seventy-seven, also is difficult. I really don't know how he's going to do it. And some persons are saying, if you, why didn't you see this before now? Because it feels like the INEC that we have now, the INEC is very resilient. They feel like we're not going back. What we have said, we have said, we have stamped it and it's sealed. There's no going back on this one. And so it's quite dicey. Some people so thinking, everybody has to the answer end. their father's name. Yes, it's like it's game over for, you know, Peter Obi. No, really so so, so for that, for that, I think, I think it may be have to do with them. If, if you, you participate in the primaries, uh -huh. Like you said, if but if like you said, if you participate in the primaries, and then you lose, like some of our politicians have been known to do in the past, is ah, I lost to, oh. um, Labour Party. Sorry, I'm calling Labour Party because I mean, from what I've seen, they're the ones that usually people <laughs> go to. Oh, Labour Party, uh, Chairman. Let's see, let's meet. I I want your that ticket, you know, mm -hmm. and then you you pay, and then they give you the ticket. And so they're saying that is not if if you want join a party and 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 go through the processes. Then if you lose, you lose. Go home, or just go home and and lick your wounds. And um, I think from what you've said, which is fantastic, a uh, reminder um, that maybe he is trying not to be, you know, caught like this, hands tied. Because if, if for now he hasn't participated in any party primaries anywhere, and he's even gone ahead not just to say. I no do, but to say, I they go, I they pack my own go, they go. <laughs> In other words, he is no longer a member, a member of, the of the PDP. So um, I think he still stands a chance of, 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 of course, he has not yet followed under what you've said, which is quite interesting, that uh, provision you mentioned from the electoral act of clause. It's quite interesting. Mercy, mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> you know, I was having a discussion with some people yesterday, and the people are so disappointed. In fact, one gentleman was so bitter. He goes, oh, Kofi, I'm so bitter. He said, Peter <laughs> B has let him down. No. I mean, because... it was, it was, people were, some people were bitter. You had the crowd who said, we, are, we move with you. And so we had a we move crowd, and we had the crowd who felt let down. That they don't care where he's going to. As far as they are concerned, it's over for Peter B. You understand? Um, and so this now brings in question, whatever party he goes to, whether it's and then he PP. can't even go to any other party. I think he can. Why? Because, because I, I just told you about Section 77 mm -hmm. of the Electoral Act mm -hmm. 2022. Mm -hmm. That says that, you know, at this point in time, what time 
are you going can, to have? Can, can you read know, it so, again? So, so um, t t what date are we today again? Today's the 26th. Yeah, the, the, the party primaries today end is the 26th. on, yeah, on the June the 3. Yes. Mm, so June so, 3. Yeah, now, if fine. you look at this part of the Electoral Act, mm -hmm. Section 77, it yeah. says that, that every registered political party shall maintain a register of its members with both hat and soft copy. And each political party shall make such register available to the commission not later than 30 days. To not less than 30 days before the date fixed for the party primaries. Okay. okay. And so, I so, so, is saying so that, that, that the, 30 days is now, is, now, is now an issue. Exactly. Okay. okay. So if you have, yeah, I mean, today is May 26. June, today is 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Is it 31st? No. Not are, sure you, are you sure his Definitely. name is not on another party's register? It can't be. That would be. Are you sure? it can't, it can't, I don't know, but I, <laughs> I mean, mean, there are people who, who are members of two parties. <laughs> no, so so because I've if you look at this particular clause, he just uh, feels that oh, you are too late. It's over for him. It's over for him. I, we don't uh, know, but I mean, this is Nigeria. A lot of things can actually happen. Let's see. Let's, let's see. Let's see what happens. happens. You know, um, let's move on. Let's move on. We'll, we'll have some time to talk about it. Very interesting. So we have um, uh, a police officer who has been calling on um, uh, Nigerian medical uh, providers or health healthcare facilities, let's call it that, um, to to treat gunshot uh, victims without asking upfront for police report. You know, uh, we all know that most times when you, a victim is taken to the uh, hospital with a gunshot wound, a GSW, he will be turned back because the hospital may be afraid, the staff may be afraid to treat him. It will be afraid because of the police. Maybe if they come for investigation, they might be implicated. That fear is what causes them to say, oh, go and bring uh, police reports before we can treat you. So the question is, when a, 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 a victim is bleeding, what time does he have or what time do his rescuers have to go to a police station and start applying for a police report? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. Um, so a, a, a superintendent of police, um, SP Benjamin Hundain, he is Hundain, is the uh, public relations officer of the police in Lagos State. He's been tweeting, you know, he tweets quite a number of times, uh, puts out some good content. It's interesting to see. He said that uh, he's shocked to learn that a few doctors still uh, request police report before treating gunshot victims. Yeah, he went on to say, kindly provide immediate medical attention as stipulated by the medical ethics, then notify uh, the police accordingly. Uh, one of our core mandates remains uh, the protection of life, is what he said. So here's a call for uh, the health care practitioners to do the right thing. Uh, doing the right thing. So it, it feels like you had the president re-echoing that uh, he just had to echo that part of the electoral act, that those who were the constitution or the law, let's even leave it at the law, saying that, oh, if you have an ambition, you have to resign. Uh, those who are political appointees, and that's what it is. So I, I, I also think that this is what the superintendent is doing. Mm -hmm. He's actually re-echoing what the act has actually stated. Because if you look at the National Health Act of 2014, it, it states clearly part three, section one. The National the, Health Act. Yes. Mm. Now, it talks about a healthcare provider, that if you're a healthcare worker or a health establishment, you shall not refuse a person's emergency medical treatment for any reason whatsoever, and there's a penalty for that, 100,000 fine or six months imprisonment for both. But the issue with us is that um, we, we have a lot of laws. If you talk about laws, um, regulations, and what have you, uh, we're not very great at obeying and ensuring that all of this is implemented. And I'm, I'm also surprised that he's saying that he's surprised. Because mm. I'm surprised that him being surprised at the fact that doctors are not treating. Because that's the norm. It's normal. Everybody knows He that, even said a few. He said a few. And we know it's not a few. A few. Mm. I mean, so it's like, don't oh, you maybe, let's, this let's, let's understand don't what the gentleman, he's just trying to be on. diplomatic, you mm. know, he's trying to be diplomatic. All right. So, so, so but this, this is something that's been going on for a very long time. Uh, it's a practice that's been going on. A lot of persons know. I mean, everybody knows us. As much as even almost the young uh, suckling would definitely know that, you know, this is what it is, that if you have a case, and that's why most times you have people, whether it's Rob, whatever situation it is, you don't have um, people or these medical practitioners attending to them. I also remember a certain situation where a colleague actually died because of, you know, the issue of um, COVID. You remember what COVID was actually great and all of that. People did a lot of rejection 
Um, you have hospitals saying, oh, no, we cannot, we cannot. And, and so it brings us back to the fact that as much as we constantly demand a change for our country, we can't blame President Muhammad Buhari. We also have to do the need for, we, we yes, have indeed. a role to play. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right, now we'll look at the last one. Uh, Mercy. Mm. All right, look at, looking at the last conversation here, you have Apostle Chibuzor, who fulfills his promise to Deborah's family. And he talked about uh, giving a mini flat. So he's made available a mini flat uh, to the family and also the family of Deborah Yakubu yes. or Deborah Yacubo Solomon. Was, yes. Okay, the uh, victim Bukho. of the Sokoto uh, 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 lynching, you know. And uh, so prior to this incident, he had, he had talked about it. He, he said that he was going to be there for them. And that's what he's done. Uh, the family of Deborah Yakubu, the young lady that was stoned to death and also bond at the same time. Apostle Chibuzor fulfills his promise to Deborah's family by making available, you know, the car for them and also the property. This would actually go a long way in helping them, you know, have a better life. Uh, the, the reaction that has actually, you know, come out from this is that people are applauding him and saying, hey, you are a man of God, you are real and you are true. But for me, this is humanity and this is what humanity is all about and this is what kindness and mess is all about so it's applaudable it's very commendable but you can also take out the fact that hey deborah actually died uh in a very dis detestful way and all that a lot of persons are still asking is that justice you know justice should prevail and that's it all right uh, there's been another shooting in the united states of america uh this time in uvalde texas it's a uh, a latest in the series of uh, mass shootings in the United States of America. Um, the mass shootings in that country are well documented. Um, of course, uh, famously, Barack Obama tried to introduce anti-gun laws, and uh, the Republicans said, no, allow us to keep our guns. Well, I hope that they're seeing what's happening, um, because uh, they are sacrificing politics, are sacrificing business, or life rather, on the altar of politics and business. Uh, with the uh, National Rifle um, uh, Association, the NRA, lobbying and paying their way to ensure that more Americans buy more and more guns. Um, they always talk about their amendments and their rights to, to own firearms and, and all that. And sometimes, you know, these, these groups, you know, they prop up people to go online and to go on TV, radio, and all that to talk. And, uh, you know, most of these rednecks, especially uh, who are mostly Republicans, don't can't read between the lines. Most of them are the not-so-well-educated populace in America. Uh, they call them Yankee boys, you know. Um, and they will shout, yeehaw, yeehaw, because they're cowboys. They want to own their guns. And what Barack Obama was say, saying was simple. See, you need to have a mental check. There needs to be somebody that can certify that you are fit and proper to own a gun. Mm. There should be a history. You should not, anyone, not just, just, not just anybody should be able to walk in, walk up and go to a gun store and buy a gun. I mean, you, you see gun shops in America on the street, just like you see ice cream shops, you know, in fast food restaurants around here. So from what we hear in this latest uh, mass shooting in, in Uvalde, Texas, uh, in an elementary school, mercy, an elementary school, I mean, it, it, it's, it's sad, really. 14 students, Students were killed. I hope that is sinking in to, to uh, Donald Trump, uh, George Bush, and co. 14 students killed. One teacher killed. This is according to Governor Greg Abbott of Texas, um, who himself is, is a Republican. The suspect is said to be a local 18-year-old uh, high school student. He's dead. Uh, so now we can make that 16 casualties so far. And the suspect is also said to have shot his grandmother. You can't tell me that someone like that was stable. Well, they say, as you lay your bed, now so you go take lie on them. I hope that they are seeing what's happening. But um, yesterday, President, United States President Joe Biden uh, gave a press briefing on that elementary school shooting at the White House. Um, he said he has been briefed on that horrific news of the elementary school shooting in Texas and uh, will continue to get briefings as um, regularly as information becomes available. Um, and uh, he says that his prayers are with the families 
impacted with, by this awful event and that he will speak um, some more as the days unfold. It's, it's really sad. Really sad. So, um, well, let, let's see how... This is very condemnable and uh, it calls for a lot of questioning because at this point you have uh, several persons saying we need the legislatures, you know, to make legislation about gun control and what have you. Just like you have rightly stated some of this point, um, you can't allow guns in the hands of anybody and anyone. And that's why coming back home to Nigeria, for those who have constantly say we need to get to a point where we defend ourselves. People need to take up arms. It's really, really not a good idea, idea or ideology uh, to, you know, to put out. I also remember the time where you had Nancy Pelosi tweeting and talking about the Buffalo uh, killings, the, uh, the Buffalo, Buffalo, kill, shootings, yeah. Buffalo shootings, targeting right. uh, black people at the time. And in that tweet, he said it was compounded by a replacement theory that a lot of people hold, and if you look at that, it's about the Republicans and what are the Republicans saying. So it feels like, you know, the issue of interest is not limited to a particular region. When you have politicians that behave in a certain way, uh, you know, they, say they have a certain behavior. I mean, the characteristics is, all, is mm -hmm. almost the same. So you can't differentiate them, whether they are not in Nigeria or the outside of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If another, they behave in a certain way and, you know, their interest would always... Um, be what it is. So what's the problem? The question is, if you have, you know, the lawmakers at this point, why do you have now 38 lawmakers not saying yes to saying, hey, we need to put a, a, a stop to gun control? It's really so, sad. So, so it's worrisome. It's really worrisome. I'm not sure these lawmakers actually have children. I mean, it shows that one thing in common, it never changes as their interest. You, they even you, really care about the people. Yeah, you remember, you know, Piers Morgan took this thing very personally when he was with CNN. You know, and um, Piers Morgan you know, lost his job because um, he was so personal about, because he couldn't understand as a Briton who came from a country that has an advanced democracy. They have healthcare, you know, public healthcare. He couldn't understand why the Americans were fighting Obamacare. Like, I mean, why don't you want your fellow citizens who can't afford healthcare to have healthcare? And you understand why they were fighting his anti, uh, or his gun law efforts, you know? I mean, why should anyone, just anyone wake up? It's crazy. So Piers Morgan took it personally, um, with his programs on CNN, and uh, uh, he paid the price for it. Yeah, he lost his job. Well, mm. well um, I, I think I think they they. It's sad to say, but they're enjoying the fruits of the seeds that they've been sowing. We have to go. Um, that's it for our training segment right here uh, on the breakfast and Plus TV Africa. When we return of the press, where we take a look at the latest headlines on the pages of the National Dailies. <laughs>